Hey guys, so today we're going to talk about uh, creating this render right here that I've creatively dis uh, titled display. So we're going to get into uh, kind of the layout, the creation, the materials, and all of that. Let's do this. So started off with something fairly simple. I just kept it uh, with a 400 centimeter width. Oh wait, with the width being 600. Um, and then you just kind of copy that, uh, rotate 90 degrees, make sure it's flush against there. Or wait. Um, and then bring it to there. I think I also uh, created a new one, rotated that 90 degrees, and then rotated that 90 degrees, brought it up to make sure it was flush with the bottom thing, and then copied this. Cool, and that was the basic shape right there. And then I created a uh, cube. I made it um, 600 by 400, uh, just so that it could fit this, and then another 400. And then when I took this, I uh, shoved it into an atom array, so I could get um, most most importantly these uh, columns here. Uh, so I think I brought it somewhere around five right there, and that's good. Um, and this I'm actually going to duplicate just to have that brought out a little more. Um, and then what we can do is grab the camera. Um, I think on this one I used a I used an 80 millimeter camera and then I'm just, just gonna go ahead and start zeroing out these coordinates. Um, and then bringing it up, moving it so that I can see. I did something like that and I brought it down so I can see the ground. Cool, awesome, just like that. Uh, so the next thing I'm going to do is I had some accents, just some angled accents on here just to break up the square look of the whole thing. Um, and that one was actually pretty simple. Uh, I think I just took that guy, copied it, rotated it 30, I think I'm gonna do 40 degrees this time, um, and just brought it out like that. Then I'm going to make it editable, uh, switch over into this view. Actually, I think I'm gonna want to rotate it 90 degrees or 180 degrees. Um, and then I'm just gonna take, oops, oops. I'm gonna keep doing that. Take this whole plane um, and extrude it, make sure you have create caps. Oh, I think I messed up. Yeah, I messed up. I'm just gonna not do that. I'm just gonna take all of this. There we go. Okay, hit D, extrude, just to get that over there. Make sure you create caps so it has this uh, thing right there. And then I'm also going to take this and move that forward. Cool. Um, and then just to not have to deal with a whole lot of stuff, I'm actually gonna create a symmetry object and drop that guy into there so we have it on both sides. Cool. Um, that's looking just about right. Uh, the next thing we're gonna want to do is grab um, the column. Um, I grabbed this uh, as a free asset from Turbo Squid. Um, it's pretty sweet and free um, and let's see I think it's right here concrete column cool I'm just gonna merge him in here um, just like that and I'm also going to do a couple things I'm gonna increase the scale and then I'm gonna uh, give him a new I think I'm gonna give him a specular material um, yes 
just like that. Sweet. A um, couple things I'm going to do. I'm actually going to solo this guy so I can uh, look at everything. I'm going to collect, select the, sol the uh, column. I want, uh, not that, I want the rectangle selection tool and I want to move him south until there. And I'm gonna do the same thing again until we get kind of a smaller thing. Um, yeah, cool. And that's it. So the next thing I'm gonna do is grab the uh, vase object, which I got from the Louvre. Someone took a bunch of 3D scans of uh, certain sculptures inside of um, the Louvre, and I uh, really liked it. So where is he? There he is. Just need to scale him up a bit. I need to, well, I need to scale them all up. Where is it? It's right here. And for some reason, it's not wanting to do the Y. What in the world? Oh, it's because I had that accidentally unchecked. Okay, cool. So uh, we're just going to take this guy, move him uh, right up there. It's going to do our best to kind of center him. I'm going to rotate 90 degrees because we want it facing the camera. Um, yeah, pretty much just like that. Cool. Let's check our frame. Looking good. I think I'm actually going to angle him down a touch. Okay, I think what I'm also gonna do is uh, go into this cube, make them a lot longer. I'm probably gonna go somewhere like, let's go like 800. And then I'm just gonna bring, oh wait, what just happened? Okay. Just so I have some more liberty with um, this guy. I'm actually also going to take this uh, and move him a little farther back. Okay. Perfect. Cool. So we got pretty much the basic setup. I'm also going to go in here. I'll mess with render settings in a second um, and change this to 1 to 1 because that's what I did. Uh, and that's just kind of my default resolution that I choose. Okay, uh, let's go ahead and adjust the camera again because that's something I should have done in the beginning, I just didn't do it. Um, okay, sweet, that's looking really good. We probably don't even need to move this guy. Let's just go like 600 and move that. Um, everything is looking so far really good. I'm gonna go ahead and cover the uh, simulation or the dynamics of the little uh, bubble things. So it's, actually I'm gonna organize this a little bit more. So we're gonna do a couple things here. I'm gonna grab this, drop it in there, and then I'm just gonna go ahead and create one for the lights and for the dynamics and I can drop that in in a minute. Um, so I think the first thing we're gonna do is start with a circle or a, a sphere and then a tube. So let me go ahead and grab these two. I'm gonna actually get out of that camera and solo this. Um, I'm gonna turn that off for a second. So the trick to this uh, is setting the object to have four rotation segments. I'm actually gonna bring myself back out of there so I can adjust the uh, position of this. And I'm sure this is gonna change 
at some point soon because uh, just because of the reflections that we're going to have in here is going to be uh, just like we're just going to need to. Okay, um, that's looking pretty good right now. I'm actually going to go ahead and go into here and move these two a little bit more forward. Um, and then I'm going to bring the camera up just a touch. Okay, cool. Looking a good, I might even just go in here and like scale it down just a touch and make sure it is touching the ground plane. Cool. Uh, let's go back to soloing these guys. And what we're going to want to do is... Oh, no, wait, what did I just do? Yeah, I just did that. Okay, cool. A little helpful hint. If you hit Control shift and then Z, that will undo your last camera movement. Um, that is very useful and has saved me a whole bunch, especially if I've been doing a lot of stuff with uh, the camera accidentally. Um, okay, so uh, another really helpful tent tip is if you go into the tube settings, we're going to want to see inside of it. So you can hit this helpful x-ray option and you can see exactly what is inside this object. It's really cool. So let's create a cloner. Drop this guy in here. I'm actually gonna change the size down to 10 and then not render perfect. I'm actually gonna bring that down to 12. Um, we're gonna want to use a radial um, adjustment. I'm gonna bring it up here to that guy. I'm gonna push it back in Z space until we get just about right there. I'm actually gonna also move that just a little bit. Um, so we're gonna want probably around, I think it did either 50 or 60. And we're gonna make sure that its radius is inside and that it's not clipping into the edges of uh, the object. It's okay if they're touching each other now, but if they're doing something like this where they're clipping through, we don't want that. That uh, is no bueno. So we're gonna do that. That's looking good. Um, okay. So a helpful tip uh, when doing these dynamics is um, right at the beginning, we set these numbers down to something small like five so that they're not touching each other and they're also not touching uh, our tube. And then I'm just gonna go five seconds in and then bring it up to 15 and then record that keyframe. So it's pretty simple, just scales up. I'm also gonna add a couple of random effectors in here. The first one I'm gonna do is actually just adjust the scale. So it's gonna to go to one. Um, and then I'm gonna drop a second one in here and it's only going to affect the Z depth. depth. So we just have all these guys uh, just kind of filling up the space in here. And once again, check to make sure that it's um, not clipping through anything. Okay, so let's get into the dynamics. Uh, what we're gonna want to do is on this tube, make sure uh, whenever we go and do simulation, we hit collider body because uh, the spheres are going to collide with the tube object. Um, and then the next thing we want to do is uh, make sure its shape is set to static mesh. Uh, that, way the, that way the simulation understands, hey, they're just gonna be bumping around the inside of this uh, object. Um, okay, and then the next thing we're gonna do is go into the simulation for the cloner. I'm just gonna go with a um, with a rigid body because I don't really need any kind of soft body dynamics. We're gonna apply the tag to the children and go to the top level because our top level is just the sphere. Um, so we're gonna set that. We're also gonna do uh, hit con control D go into dynamics and make sure that the gravity is set to zero so that they don't just completely fall down to the uh, bottom. Um, okay, so now we're just gonna go ahead and run the simulation. I'm actually gonna save this out. I uh, really want to do that. Okay, because sometimes, you know, if you run simulations, sometimes it doesn't work out super great. Oh, that looks awesome. Perfect. That actually looks right, right there. Sweet. Um, so what we're going to do is, oops, I didn't mean to do that. Uh, we're going to go ahead and bake the dynamic simulation. 
um, so that we can scrub through here, find our most desirable frame. I think mine's going to be something like that where they're kind of more just there. Um, and then I'm going to drop a, uh, I'm going to drop a subdivision surface. Okay. Ooh, that changed it up a bit. Yeah. Um, okay, we're not going to do the subdivision surface. We're going to do instead a cloth surface. I'm going to do that. Okay, no, I'm not. <laughs> Sometimes these things work, sometimes they don't. It just kind of depends on a lot of stuff. Okay, then we're gonna just do the subdivision surface. And then we're gonna bake that. Dynamics, it should just go, yeah, real quick after that. Cool. That doesn't look right. Okay, so I know exactly what to do. So I just went in here and adjusted the um, uh, where is it? I'm gonna I adjusted the scale value from uh, fifteen to ten, so it just doesn't get as large as it used to. Um, and then I'm actually gonna go in here and add some uh, turbulence. So in order to do that, you need to um, go into the force hit include and bring in that now i'm going to go into here we go 20 bring that scale up uh and then we're going to bake it just so you can see what it looks like i'll take a second all right um i'm going to save it too because i want to Yeah, okay, that's looking like something. Um, the only problem is that the strength is just a bit too big. So we're gonna go back down, we're gonna clear and bake again, and attempt that. Cool. Let's run this simulation, and boom. Yeah, that looks pretty all right. I think frame 15 is gonna look just fine for us. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, unsolo this, and let's go ahead and grab all these guys, bring it into our dynamics null just to stay organized a bit. Um, we're gonna go in here. Yeah, uh, let's go ahead and, so that we don't forget later, turn those off. Um, now we're going to, I guess we should start texturizing everything. Let's go ahead and do that. Um, so the first texture I'm gonna make is the reflective mirror shader that I put on everything. Um, that'll be good to have. So we start with the glossy. I'm just gonna go ahead and rename it mirror and drop it on uh, kind of all of the objects that we want it to be applied to, boom. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and actually go into kind of our render settings so we can look. Um, my typical render settings, I think I said this in some other tutorials, but I'm just gonna go ahead and go back through it. Uh, a good path tracing. Samples are a bit high, especially whenever we're doing these kind of like um, rudimentary looks. Uh, so I'm actually gonna set the diffuse depth to eight and eight. The samples max is 200. That might even be just a little too high for what we're doing. 
and then adaptive sampling, and I crank that up to 0 0.05. Oh, and then the GI clamp, we want that to one. Um, and I think that's gonna be fine. So I'm gonna go ahead, open up the live view, and I'm gonna drop into the side here, and boom, looks great, perfect. <laughs> uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and start uh, into the uh, adjustments here. On the other screen, I'm gonna pull up um, the materials I have and just kind of drag and drop them in. So let's just uh, go into here. The first thing I'm gonna do, actually the first thing I'm gonna do is go into the index and I'm gonna crank that up. And I'm gonna take the diffuse and I'm going to crank that down. So now everything is pretty much a mirror in here. I'm actually probably gonna to want to switch this to the other side. Um, yeah, so now everything is reflective and mirror-like, which is really great. Uh, the next thing I want to do is drag in. So this uh, texture I'm grabbing is from Raul Marx's uh, free astronaut texture or model that he's created and sent. Um, out to the world. It's awesome. He's awesome. Um, and this is the ground text. Uh, I've shown other tutorials with it there. Um, and it's just super great. So uh, I'm going to drag this actually into my roughness. And if you see, it is completely crazy. So we're going to um, dial it down quite a bit. I'm actually going to just do this in here so we can see the updates. Um, okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and take this, I'm gonna crank that power way down, and I'm gonna turn the gamma up so that it's just looking a bit rough. Um, the next thing we're gonna do is actually drag and drop a uh, an image texture. Um, this one I got from, this is gonna be an angiotropic uh, bump What's actually great is David Aryev has a fantastic tutorial on how to do this yourself just in Octane. Um, for this specific one, I just didn't do it. I just kind of did whatever. Uh, so I'm going to go into here, grab, well, I'm gonna go into here, grab that, boom, no, and there we go. We have our perfect anzeotropic filter. Um, we're going to take that power way down. We're going to crank that camera way up. And then we're actually going to go into the transform and I'm going to scale it down quite a bit. And I'm going to even crank that power down way more. So, cool. Well, that's too much. We just want a very subtle effect here. Nothing uh, too crazy. Cool. That's actually looking great as our... Uh, material. Um, cool. So the next thing we're going to do is actually grab, um, what are we doing next? What we ought to do, we're going to do the, uh, golden material. So the golden, um, something like poles or something. I might actually go in here and crank it up a bit more. I'm actually going to go eight. I kind of want them a little bigger so we can see them. Um, okay, the next thing we're gonna do is grab, or we're actually gonna do the uh, pretty much the exact same thing. We crank the index to eight, we're gonna turn the diffuse down to zero, but we're gonna go into the specular and make this look like gold. Actually, I'm going to drop this onto our Atom Array so I can see the updates. Um, and they're gonna just be right there. So we're gonna go, into the specular, uh, move that to more of a gold tone. That might be a bit too much. Let's try that. How does that look? Well, it's a bit much, but let's see if we can go into the roughness and kind of touch it up a bit. Um, I'm actually going to go and grab the uh, metal texture. Looking good. Um, and I'm going to turn that power and gamma down. Uh, adjust those so that's just not as crazy. And I'm actually gonna go into the projection and change it to box so it doesn't look so bad. Um, 
And then we're gonna go, did I do bump? I don't think I did any bump. We don't need to do any bump there. Um, okay, so that's looking great. That's looking good. Uh, actually, I think what I want to do is, um, I wonder what's causing that. Oh, I know what's causing that. Okay, we don't have, there we go. I figured out that. Um, the next thing we're gonna do is, uh, see if you look in the reflection here, it's kind of tough to do reflections, but this is not matching up super great. So what we're gonna do is go into the, where is it? Uh, we're just gonna grab this plane and I think I'm just gonna make it wider. So like 600 as well. Um, let's pop out of here. Shuffle that around a bit. One, 600. Cool. Um, that is looking great. All of our materials are roughed up and looking good and reflective. Sweet. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do uh, is go and uh, grab these spheres. We're going to make these spheres look interesting. So I'm going to go ahead and... Uh, where is it? What did I do? I think I did this. Um, with the special thing that we're gonna do, we're actually gonna go into the dynamic simulation at a cloth surface, make sure the subdivisions are down to zero because that's gonna change some weird things. I'm gonna move that to that. And then we're actually gonna drop this into here. Um, and then maybe change, bring the radius way down. No, that's not working. What in the world happened? I don't know why it does that. It just kind of did that. Weirdly, maybe not, maybe we won't do that, that's okay. Um, so let's see, we're gonna add these guys, make them look really interesting. And I think I went with the kind of glass looking. Uh, spheres, so I'm gonna grab that in there. Oh, let's see, we're gonna change this to 1.33, I think. Just to add a little funness to it. Um, and then, you know what I think I did? I'll try this one more time. Because I think I figured it out. Uh, dynamics. Yeah, there we go. Okay. So I wanted to add some thickness into the sphere because by default, the sphere is just kind of our whatever their width are, um, it's like infinite, or they're solid, they're supposed to be solid. Well, I wanted to have a little thickness to it so I can get some fun refraction and bouncing going around in here. So I created a cloth surface, I set the thickness to one, and then I made that a, a parent of the sphere, and then that subdivided, and then that is cloned, and then that is dynamically moved around the scene into blah, 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 blah. There you go. Cool, simple enough. Um, next thing we're gonna want to add just a little bit of a, a little bit of a roughness. We don't want it to be too big. We just want to add a little roughness in there so we can see all the light that's being caught. Um, and then we're gonna go ahead and uh, I think I went into the film layer and added just a tiny bit of weirdness to it. I think it was a film layer. Maybe it wasn't. Um, it might be. Oh, make sure you have fake shadows checked. That's important. Is it index? No. Is it this film layer? I already did that. Uh, there it is. I don't think I messed with that, to be honest. Okay, we're just gonna go ahead and save that out. Cool. Um, next thing we're gonna do is uh, go ahead and set up some lights. Actually, I don't like the way this thing is doing its thing. Hmm. Well, what we could always just do is delete this and add a new one. 
Boom. Okay, cool. And I think all we did was just add a little bit of a roughness. I think just one would be fine. Okay. Um, next thing, we're going to go ahead and tackle the uh, the subsurface scattering material for the vase and the uh, column here. So that would be this one. So we're going to just call it SSS because that's easy. And then uh, we're going to attach it to the vase. And I already did the concrete column uh, right there. So this one, I'm actually going to go ahead and open up the... Uh, Octane node editor, and I'm going to drag this to this side so I have more room. Cool, I should have done that before. Uh, we're going to take a scattering medium because it's subsurface scattering, and that makes sense. We're going to drop it into the medium, and then we're going to grab three RGB spectrums um, and drop them into the transmission, the absorption, and the scattering. Cool. Now, because we haven't set up our lighting yet, it's going to change. I know it will. Uh, but right now we're just going to keep it to this. I think I had this set to like maybe 25 as the density. And then uh, we're going to make this kind of a creamy color. So it really doesn't take a whole lot in order to get that cream color looking in there. So just kind of do a little bit of that. That's looking good. Um, I am noticing that our uh, vase and thing are not on the ground. So we're going to go ahead and do that right now. Um, I think, is it this line? It looks like about right. Cool. Uh, looking good. Sweet. Already it was looking really nice. Um, so now I think what we're going to want to do is start with the lighting and I'm actually going to go ahead and clear unused objects because we don't need them. Um, Let's go ahead and set up the lighting. Lighting is going to be good and important. Uh, I kind of went a little weird on this, so just kind of bear with me. Um, what I did for this is I took an octane light, or here, I just have it docked right here, an octane light. I made it, I think, uh, 200 by 300? No. 300 by 200. Um, and then I rotated it 90 degrees, of course. And then I brought it up here. So you could see that. And then what I did was I actually moved it so it's flush in here. So it's just right there. Um, and then what I did was I copied that. I'm actually going to turn that way down to like maybe 25. Um, I copied that. I did also set this to an IES light. I have a tutorial out on realistic lighting and IES lights. Um, I use it for just about any light because uh, it adds realistic fall off and depth to uh, your lights and it is absolutely amazing. Uh, highly recommend checking that out because uh, it's really kind of a cool thing. So I'm doing that and then I'm copying it so that uh, it is just kind of taking up the entire area uh, with the lights. Sweet. Looking good. Um, so what's interesting though is that if you take off the camera visibility or the shadow visibility, you could still see it on the reflection um, because it's being reflected. So you don't really need to uncheck those if you're looking to do that. We'll just adjust the height of it um, until we can get it out of the shot. And that looks, that looks good. Um, so the next thing I did is actually create a uh, that. I think I just did this and then I moved it to that. Cool. Um, the next thing we're going to do is uh, go in here and adjust the light setting. So check to see, I made these two lights blue. So uh, just crank that up. I think I just went like almost 100% on the uh, uh, 
temperature over here made it look very, very blue. And then on the right side, I think I dropped it down to about 22, something like that. 22 looks good. Uh, yeah, 22. There we go. Now you have this uh, very dynamic looking blue and orange side to uh, the render, which is great. That's exactly what you want. I think I remember also going in here and uh, adding some roughness as well, uh, just like a little bit, just to make sure it catches the uh, light just a touch. I'm gonna go ahead and save because that's important. Okay, and then the next thing I did with this material I completely forgot about is I created a second glossy material and then I just changed the color to uh, kind of that uh, cream looking color that we're trying to match with that. Um, created a mixed texture, dropped these dudes in, and then I dropped it onto, well, I need to pull that out. I dropped it onto this and that, and then also that. I'm gonna go in here real quick and just add a little bit of roughness, because that looks better. Um, and then in here, auto adjust, I, actually brought it and made it much more on the specular side. Like I said, this is just to uh, add a little bit of depth into it, nothing too much, um, just a little bit. I saw this technique used before by someone else and I thought it was really good and it can be a really good result. So um, next we're going to, uh, what else are we gonna do? Oh, I think I added two more lights actually. I did, I added two more lights. So I'm gonna copy these guys. And uh, I just kind of angled them a bit uh, to get a better look at uh, what's happening there. And I'm gonna make sure that they're kind of out of the reflection, uh, but still used in the lighting. And I might even just bring them up to like 75. And 75, cool. Sweet, that's actually looking uh, very, very close to how it was. Um, okay, so I think the next thing we're gonna do is go ahead and, um, well, I think I'm gonna want to drop these lights into here. Got that good, I'm also gonna drop that in there. Okay, let's go ahead and go over camera settings. Um, so right off the bat, I'm going to make sure the focus is set to the face, because that's where I want the focus to be. Um, I'm gonna take off the autofocus. These settings I got from David Aryev at iDesign, uh, because his stuff is just amazing. I'm gonna drop that focus a bit, not too much. I still want the spheres to more or less be in focus. Um, so we'll just go ahead and kind of get that going a bit so I can see just where that's gonna be. I think 3.5 is gonna be the perfect spot. Cool. Um, camera imager, I always enable it. I go to the AI denoiser, which saves an absolute insane amount of time later on. Uh, highly recommend doing that. The next thing I did was I went to the response and I went all the way down to linear and I brought the gamma up to 2.2. Uh, there's a lot of reasons to that that I don't quite know a whole lot. Uh, I just kind of do it because I've seen other people do. And that's about it. Um, and then I kind of go in here and I drop in some of these, uh, uh, some of these LUTs just to kind of get a gauge as to how well it's gonna look later. That's looking good, but I never really, I always do that later in the post process. Um, here's post processing. I uh, click that going, I kind of bump it up a little bit, maybe to about 25. And then I, since I always put that onto a separate um, pass, uh, I just kind of let it go for a bit. Cool, the next thing that's gonna be really fun to mess with is uh, the volume. I think that's our last one in this process. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a fog volume. I'm actually gonna save this. I'm gonna stop the rendering right now because that can be very taxing whenever you're making adjustments on here. Um, I'm gonna bring that to 25. 
I'm going to make sure the size is set to, actually, I'm gonna kinda of go wider so I can make sure that it's encompassing the whole scene. Um, I'm going to make this, what, like 800 by 600 by 800 or so, something like that. So the trick to uh, fog volumes is that you always want your camera to uh, be inside the fog. So I'm going to take this actually and go to a thousand. Does that encompass him? Almost. Let's go ahead and go to 1200. And I think that'll be just good enough. Cool. Um, so we can turn off the view. We're going to keep that out there just while we have time. Let's go ahead and adjust these. I already know kind of the values that I'm looking for. So I'm going to bring that up to white. Um, I'm going to add a little bit of a scatter and then uh, actually I think I do kind of like a lot of scatter and then I bring the density down to probably about here and let's go ahead and save it and check it. Let's see how that looks. Wow, that looks so great. Um, let's go ahead and take that density way, way more down. Um, yeah, I'm actually going to go in here and pause the post processing a bit because that's getting a little taxing. Um, so far that's looking pretty good. Um, yeah, that's looking really good actually. And if we go in here and check the, uh, denoiser, we can go in here and see, and it's doing its job. Of course, we need to set it to kind of super low value, so it's not super great, uh, but that's okay. That is a-okay. Um, I think that is just about how we did it. So I'm going to go ahead and save this. Uh, a couple things I wanted to check on um, in here. I actually cranked it up to 5,000 and that was definitely not needed. So I'm thinking probably a value of 2,500 is going to be okay. Um, we don't need to mess with that. And the render settings, going to Octane. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and undock this, minimize it. And to render passes, hit enable, of course, go to 32 bits. We're going to change the tone map type to tone map uh, because if not, you go into a just kind of this crazy spiral of um, uh, linear color space and that just kind of does not go super great. Uh, so here we go. We're going to save this as display tut. Um, I'm actually going to uh, bring this down to like 800 so that it doesn't take as long for me. Um, and then I do the raw uh, subsurface, denoise passes, denoise beauty, denoise volume. Uh, don't go into the lighting passes, render layer, no thank you. And then I always do Z depth and then uh, I'm using shading normal as well. Um, that's for a lot of reasons. And then I'm actually gonna go ahead and open back up the window, run it again so I can check the Z depth. Um, Z, oh, there we go. And then yeah, kind of just like that, that'll work. I can always crunch the values later to get a more, just a more deeper uh, look. Um, that's looking great, actually. So that's looking, that's looking really good. I think what I'm gonna do is actually rotate this a little bit, because you can see it's got kind of a weird uh, edge to it. I don't know if that's going to do a whole lot for it, but I'm just going to go ahead and go with that. See, so like even at this uh, small frame size, it's telling me I have an hour on this render. It's just kind of, it's a lot. It's not super optimized, but that's just kind of the workflow uh, that I go with this. And it is actually blowing out these lights. So I'm going to go in here. You never want to blow it out. I'm going to go in here and adjust our lighting. Uh, from 75 probably down to 25 uh, because 
That's important. And I might actually, oops, oops, oops. Let's go back. Okay, I might actually go in here and, and you know what, that looks pretty good, actually. I think I'm going to here. Uh, highlight compression just a little bit, just to make sure it's not super crazy. Um, oh wait, what in the world just happened? I'm, it's because for some reason Octane is at definitely not that, definitely don't want that. Not sure what happened there. Okay, that's way better now. Now that looks way better. Okay, that timing was just a bit ridiculous. I didn't think that was gonna go over super great. Um, cool, so I'm actually gonna go in here. I think these are our front lights. I could be wrong, but I think they're, yeah, they're the front lights. So we're gonna go in, bring these back up to 50. That way we just have more light on this guy. Um, but I think that's it. So let's go ahead and uh, render it out. And um, yeah, I will catch you in After Effects. Okay, welcome to After Effects. Um, I just jumped into, <clears throat> excuse me, the exact same uh, After Effects project file that I uh, used for the regular one. Um, and we're just gonna go ahead and start creating our comp here. Ooh, what did I just do? I oh, thank you. Um, open up Extractor. I think our first thing is the beauty. We're gonna check that real quick. Um, because I just recently got a uh, job as a visual effects artist, I have kind of gotten a little crazy on uh, naming things and organizing things. Uh, so I think it's better to be more organized um, than not. So I'm not really Uh, super apologetic about it, but it is going to take a little bit more time to set up because that's just how it rolls. Okay, um, I think we're going to want to uh, bring those guys down. Okay, so we got the volume at the beauty. Okay, let's just go ahead and start adding these from the bottom. The beauty here, it's not super n noisy, but what we can always do is drop in a denoiser and that'll clean it up uh, pretty well. Um, I kind of like the green in there, so I think I'm just going to keep it. Um, if you have, uh, and look, the AI denoiser actually does an incredible job. Not that, hold on. Let's take a look at this real quick. So here's the denoiser plugin, and here's the AI denoiser, and that's kind of crazy, especially since that's, regular, that's with the denoiser, and that's AI. That's insane. That's really cool. Sorry. Um, I just needed a second to kind of appreciate that stuff. Uh, yeah, I'm just going to go ahead and use this, um, and then I can drop in that, add a screen, and boom, we are good to go. I just realized I didn't add my... Uh, I don't think I added my... Uh, uh, post-processing pass, but oh well, that'll be okay. Um, so I think the first thing I want to do is go ahead and just add a little color into here. So I'm going to use Magic Bullet Looks um, to drop in a couple of things. First thing I'm going to do is actually drop in uh, a color LUT. Um, one of my favorite ones to use is uh, in the free Grayscale Gorilla Let's Pack. Um, the first and the last ones are super awesome. I think I'm gonna use that one. Um, and then I'm also gonna add an S-curve into here. Uh, I'm gonna darken up the shadows because those are a bit much and it's kinda blown out. So we're gonna adjust that a little bit. That's looking better. It's looking a lot better, yeah. We have a whole lot of latitude um, in creating this image because of setting it to uh, linear, which is really nice. Plus 32, 
uh, bit depth is really good too. Um, I think the next thing I'm going to add is a, uh, what do you call it? Uh, film convert. Now this isn't really what this plugin is supposed to be used for. Um, because that just doesn't make sense. But I really enjoy the color treatment uh, that happens on it. Um, if you go in here, you can look at, uh, well, you know, it has it adds a lot of really cool color of, uh, changes. I think that looks really good. I think I might even stick to, I think I'll do that one. I'm not gonna add any grade. I'm gonna do that in Photoshop. Um, and the curve we're fine with color we're fine with um see what's interesting though with the ai denoising is that sometimes you'll get um these uh strange blobs in here um which is not the most desirable. But, you know, it just kind of happens. Okay, um, cool. The next thing I did to make the shot look a lot more interesting, actually, I think I went in here and I even added a little bit of diffusion um, bring, just to bring the size down. I'm gonna, I don't want it to, it's not going to be super big and noticeable, but just a little bit. I might even bring that strength down a lot more. Um, yeah, I think that'll look good. Cool. Um, so now I'm going to actually add particles. I actually got this uh, these particle images from Video Copilot. Andrew Kramer has a bunch of free particles that he put out. Um, I think... What I am looking for with these is just uh, very interesting compositions. So something like, um, and if we go into this particle thing that I have here, this is how it looks on this image. Um, I think all I did was, it was number six. Okay, so take particle thing number six. We're gonna add it into here. Uh, I'm just going to put it on top while we do these adjustments. Um, I'm even going to scale it up because we want it to fit the whole image. And then uh, we're going to find a great spot in here that looks fun and dynamic. That looks awesome. We're actually going to go in here and pre-compose it. Boom, pre-composed. Um, let's go ahead and add some... Uh, levels so we can go ahead and clip the blacks because what we're end up what we're going to end up doing is uh, we're going to end up setting this to screen or I think I set it to add um, so we're going to want to make sure that there's a bunch of black levels in here so that it's not too kind of, you know, crazy with that. Um, cool. So we did that. I think I want to move it to a much more dynamic looking frame. Something like, um, I know there's some fun. So yeah, something like that. That looks great. And then I'm going to add another video co-pilot uh, thing, and it's called VC Color Vibrance. And this one I'm actually going to set to kind of that orangey, tone from uh, our lights over here that's looking good and then what I'm going to do actually is I'm going to mask this uh, so what we're going to want to do is create a well yeah what we're going to want to do is create a um, a solid, I'm gonna do a white solid. We're gonna create a gradient ramp, radial blur. Uh, I want this to be centered. So what is that, 360, cool. And then uh, we can actually, I wanna swap the colors and we could uh, move that out so we could just get a natural looking vignette around. 
and we set the track mat to luma mat and boom we have uh, a beautiful vignette so that's without and that is with looks good looks great love it so if we go into here go into this frame looking good we're actually going to move um we're actually gonna move this guy more over here so that we can have him over there. Cool. The next thing I'm gonna do is actually go in here, duplicate that, and we're gonna find another uh, dynamic thing. And I'm gonna change the color to blue. And not like too much of a blue, just kind of a good solid blue. That might even be a whole lot. And I'm probably going to want to, yeah, I'm going to adjust the frame quite a bit. Let's uh, have it do something just like that. That looks good. That looks really good. Okay. Um, I'm actually going to go in here and kind of set this to screen because we want to have both of these guys in here. Yeah, there we go. That's looking great. Cool, let's add that. Let's bring that below. Let's not do that. Or let's do that, but kind of bring down the opacity of it quite a bit. No, no, let's just do that. Cool. Um, the next thing we're going to add is um, video uh, optical flare. Now you can build your own. I am just using this one right here. This is a default one. Um, I think it looks really good and I just thought it was really kind of funny. Not funny, but yeah. So I think I brought him kind of like right here just to add some dynamics to this. And boom, that's looking good. That's looking really good. I might even bring him. Nope, no I'm not. Cool, that looks great. All right, I think the next step is to bring it into Photoshop. So I'm going to hit uh, Control Alt S, change that to trillions of colors, uh, go into our tutorial, and boom. Now let's open this up in Photoshop. Okay, so here's Photoshop. I'm going to duplicate this layer, uh, change it to a smart filter. I'm gonna go into the Knit Collection Analog Effects Pro. This is also free. A lot of really great free things. I uh, learned about this one from Beeple. I actually went into the Camera 7 Classic. Um, and then I think I just adjusted these a little bit, adding a little bit grain back into it, um, just to kind of add a little sum, sum to it. Instead of having a faded look, I went neutral because um, I, I really enjoyed the color treatment. I just didn't... Uh, like the fade. I wanted to keep the dark blacks in there. Um, and then in here, I think I dropped the brightness a little bit, probably down to there. Saturation looks fine. Contrast looks fine. Cool. And all honesty, that's about, that's about it. That's what I did to this render. Um, I want to thank you guys so much for watching this. Uh, I know I have not been super, uh, <laughs> super, what do you call it? present on YouTube. Um, things kind of just got super crazy with uh, me graduating college. Um, I just moved into a new apartment and I just started a new job. So things have just kind of been insanely quick. Um, but rest assured, uh, now that things are winding down just a little bit more, um, I fully intend on doing a lot more video breakdowns, render breakdowns, um, and stuff along those lines. I uh, just kind of really enjoyed doing YouTube videos and getting back into it. Um, and so I'm now in a much better position than I was before uh, to kind of get that going. So um, thank you guys for, for watching this and uh, I'll see you in the next one.